Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at theserverside.com. You can follow me on Twitter, at CameronMCNZ. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the Hibernate Session Factory. And not only talk to you about it, but also tell you how you cr create it three separate ways. So what is the Session Factory? Well, the Session Factory from Hibernate is Hibernate's implementation of the Entity Manager Factory from JPA. The JPA is the Java Persistence API specification. It is only a spec. So if you actually want to use JPA, there has to be an implementation under the covers that you're using. Hibernate's the most popular. There's Eclipse Link, there is Data Nucleus, but I think Hibernate's got well over 50% of the market share. And so when you use the standard API, which has something like the Entity Manager Factory, underneath the covers, somebody's implemented that with their own class. And Hibernate's class that implements the Entity Manager Factory is this thing of theirs called the Session Factory. Now what does the Session Factory do? Well, what do you think a Session Factory does? It pumps out sessions. And sessions are these components that allow you to do things like add, update, and delete records in the database. Now, the session from Hibernate, it's what we used back in the days before the JPA specification existed. But now that the specification exists we don't use the we don't use hibernate sessions we use uh, we use entity managers um, and so the entity manager is now the modern one that we use um, but from time to time there's a corner case where you have to dig into the hibernate apis to get some special hibernate functionality that's not part of the spec in that case you need to get to the session factory and you need that session factory to give you a hibernate session that you can use. So occasionally you need to go in and actually create a hibernate session factory of your own so you can actually get some of these cool hibernate sessions. Now there's a couple of ways to do it. So one way to do it, and this is the standard way that we've been doing it for years, is to first set up a hibernate config.xml file. This goes on your class path. This describes how to connect to the database, including the Here's the MySQL driver, the name of the database, credentials, what dialect you're using, all of the information that the, that the session factory needs to know in order to connect to the underlying database goes in that XML file. And then the code to get the session factory is just this, configuration config equals new configuration, run the configure method, which kind of helps out loading all of this stuff now use this to build the session factory that gives you your session factory bob's your uncle and then if you need any sessions from that session factory you call the get current session method so that's one way of doing it i like this way i don't like xml i've never liked the hibernate config.xml file so there's another route that you can use this route, uh, you just put all of your settings into a hash map. You can see that all of these settings here are just the ones from the XML file. So you can see, you know, connection URL, driver class, you see that here, driver class, connection URL. But you put this into a hash map, then you feed the hash map into this service registry object. You list all of your different Java beans, annotated entities with the, inside this metadata sources object. And then you put all of this together into a nice little soup. You get this metadata object, which has the service registry information in it. And then that gives you your session factory, which you can then use to use all, to create all sorts of session objects. This is quite a big difference between doing it this way and the way we did it in say Hibernate 3.5. We could have used something called a, an annotated configuration that's been deprecated and they've created a, a new modular way of creating the session factory with all of these different registry off objects. It's a, it's a, a much more flexible way to do their implementation. Much of it's hidden from you if you're using JPA, but it's kind of cool to go underneath the covers and see how they're doing it. Now, if you are using JPA, here's a neat little, neat little trick, a neat little cheat. If you want to get the session factory, all you have to do is get your entity manager. From the entity manager, uh, you just say to it, hey, um, give me access to the underlying implementation of the entity manager which of course as i mentioned earlier is the hibernate session so the entity manager dot unwrap gives you access to the hibernate session and then once you've got the session you can get the session factory it's just a matter of session dot get session factory now the question is if you've already got the session 
why do you need the session factory? And that's a very good question that really I'm not up to answering right now. It certainly seems putting the cart before the horse, but it's a trick and you can do it. Um, normally all you need is the session. And so you just hold on to the entity manager factory and then you can just unwrap the entity manager instances as much as you want. And now you've got the low lying session, but you can see that little session factory hanging around there from a get session factory call. So I think that's a neat little cheat. Now that does assume that you're using JPA and JPA means you're gonna need this persistence.xml file somewhere in your class file. So make sure you've got JPA up and running and working properly, but if you do, and you need a Hibernate session or session factory, that's a cool way to do it. Anyways, there you go. That's a little bit about the Hibernate session, the Hibernate session factory, and some of the stuff that's going on underneath the covers by those clever folks at JBoss Hibernate when you use their implementation of JPA.